Today we're going to be learning, just kind of going through uh, performance-based warm-ups. Um, so as we kind of get everything ready and going through, uh, biggest things with performance-based warm-ups, you always want to make sure that your warm-up, and I'm going to star this for your notes, your warm-up is related to your movement skill of the day. So that's related to your performance-based session. So if you're doing a linear performance-based session, what type of warm-up do you think you guys would do? Something linear. Something linear, yep. So you would do a linear-based warm-up session. Same thing if you were doing a change of direction or a lateral-based movement prep session or a performance-based session, you would do what type of warm-up? Lateral. A lateral, yep. Super, super easy, basically not asking any quick questions there, just going through. So you always want to make sure it mimics and preps them for that day. So thinking if you're going to be doing a linear-based speed day, you're going to have a lot of linear-based A skips, pillar skips, different things going throughout. So the warm-up has five main components. So we're going to break each one of these up and we'll be practicing all week long, kind of going through. But in your five components, the first movement or first component of it would be your general movement. Okay. So in general movement, our goal here, what, can anyone guess what the goal of general movement is? To Think of your own primary. blood flowing. And blood flow, so that would be raise our core temperature. And then make sure it's low impact, low intensity, just to make sure they're kind of getting their body moving. So here, when you go to your general movements, you typically want to see one to four movements. Can't spell the day. And then you typically want to be about 20 to 40 yards per each movement. What would be a good example of some general movement you would do at the beginning of a warm-up session? Even Coach Lori or Coach Kinta or Coach Ty could yell in as well for you guys. Any dynamic movements? So thinking less dynamic, so it's just general movement. So general. Lori, you do, what do you usually start off your general movement with? Jog is uh, an easy one. Jog, super easy, a jog, back and forth, a back pedal, easy skips, different things, kind of just easy movements, low impact, low intensity, kind of get the body rocking a lot. Second thing we like to do, can anyone take a guess what they think it might be? No guesses? Hip activation. So I'm sure you guys have seen us going through here. When it comes to a performance-based session, why is it important that we fire up the hips? Because all, almost all sports movements are through a hip hinge, triple extension. Yep, almost everything kind of drives from the hips, whether it be a hip hinge, triple extension, uh, a rotation, any piece, it does come from that core trunk base area. Um, in the hip activation movements, typically you want to see three to five movements. And then these ones can range. It could be anywhere from five to 10 yards, or it could be in place hip based movements. What's something you guys have seen a lot so far while being here this past week of our hip activation throughout the warmups? Hip 9090s. Hip, hip 9090s is a great example. What's another thing? I'm sure you guys have grabbed them for the coaches. Uh, different equipment we use to fire up their hips at the beginning of every session. Bands, bands yep, mini bands. Probably the easiest and most effective way to get hips fired up because you're going to put them on. Once the bands are in the right location, their hips are going to fire even if the athletes don't want them to. That makes sense? Cool. Now, who can guess what comes next in our next component for our warm up? I'm writing it as we speak if someone wants to guess it out loud. If not, it's dynamic flexibility. So in dynamic flexibility, our goal is to create more specific blood flow to our desired areas. And loosen slash think, take the body into a readiness place. So even we want to take out the word loosen, like ready the body to move. Now, in the dynamic flexibility portion, you'll see a few more movements. This thing will be four to six movements based. And again, this one could also be done in place or 10 to 20 yards each. Does anyone have a good example of a dynamic flexibility movement they've seen throughout their time the last past week? Could be anything, anyone wants to shout one out? 
like a quad stretch or something? Quad, quad stretch, yep. I'm sure you guys have seen any coaches do the world's greatest stretch. Ryan, it's your first day, so you don't need to answer too many crazy questions. Okay. Yep. Is that this thing where you guys go down like that? Scoop the floor? Yeah. That's more of our hamstring scoops, okay. but that is also a dynamic flexibility movement. So that's also one that kind of goes through rep. Okay. Um, after our dynamic flexibility, this is where we're going to get a little bit more specific. So we're going to have movement integration. So in our movement integration, this is where you're gonna see more specific movement. Related to their movement skill of the day. So you will also see some implementation of their skill of the day as well. So implementation of their performance session of that day. So if I have a linear base day, in my movement integration portion, this is where you're gonna see a lot of my A skips, my marches, my bounds, different stuff that's gonna have their body moving and prepped to work in the manner of which I want them to throughout that performance-based session for that day. Does that make sense? What's a example if we were doing a change of direction focus day? So I think when you guys were here watching Isaiah on Tuesday, coach, what was one of the movement integrations he used in his warm-up session for that prep high school group? If anyone can remember. Did you do suicides? No. Was it the cone drill that you guys were doing? I don't know if that was. Good. So you guys are thinking more like workouts themselves, think like just like the warm up. Right? Still in the warm up, yep. First five to ten minutes, right? So before we do our first break for water, kind of tea, like the T cone drills. That would be more uh, specific to the actual workout again. Oh. Uh, so different things. So that's their if the T cone is their performance based session. So that's their actual skill work of the day. What did Isaiah do leading up to the T-cone drill prior to starting? I don't remember. Isaiah, would you like to help him out? So again, like with the T-cone, like using that specific example, right? Like I didn't coach that class, but with the movement integration, you want it to be movements that are gonna mirror what you're gonna do in your session, right? So if I know I have a change of direction based session, I wanna do a lot of movements that are side to side, lateral, right? You wanna put them in different positions so they actually have to change direction, right? So push the bases, lateral shuffles, single leg bounds moving laterally. Anything that you can put them in a different position and switch up how you're moving, lateral high knees, lateral skips, things like that. So they get your more specific movements that are gonna lead and actually help them for that movement skill of the day. Cool. Is that when you were using the bands and like having them like step like forward, like they'd take like one step and then they would like move in the other direction? Are you talking about like the big bands around the hips or like the no, small I think around the ankles and they would go like so, that's so that would be their hip activation. Yeah, so that's early on. That's hip activation, right? Anytime you see it's like mini bands, uh -huh. most likely it's going to be hip activation. Anyone have any questions off their movement integration now? Everyone feel confident, confident and comfortable knowing what that looks like? Cool. Last little piece, the finishing of your warm-up for your performance-based session should be some type of neural activation. So your neural activation, we do that to fire up their CNS and prime their body to learn. So, here in your neural activation, throughout this, you'll typically see two to four movements. And again, this one could either be in place or five to 10 yard. What's that say, prime what? Uh, prime learning. So we want to prime learning throughout the neural activation. So a lot of the times when it comes to a performance-based session, right after finishing our warm-up, we're going to go into the performance. We're going to give them water break, come right back in. If their CNS system is not properly fired up, one, they're not going to move properly. But two, we're trying to make sure that their body and their mind can connect and actually learn what we're trying to process them through. If we're going to be teaching them acceleration that day, teaching them to hold 45-degree positions and go throughout high knee drives with triple extension throughout the lower body, we don't want to make sure they're just coming in cold. We want to make sure they're primed not only to think, but also to work, if that makes sense. So what's an example of something I did that you guys watched to prime up their neural activation? I think this is the very end of your warm-up right before we set them to go get water. You guys, I think yesterday you guys played, or Friday you guys played a game, right? Yeah, what? The younger kids you play a some, game. Some type of game, yep. So especially with the younger population, a game is going to get them thinking right away. Lori plays a, a really good game, tic-tac-toe, where she makes the kids react off of a go call. 
but then they're sprinting to a tic-tac-toe board. So now the kids not only are sprinting fast, so it's their quick burst, which is typically what you want to see from a neural activation, but they're also trying to think and work at the same time. A big one you guys have seen me do, uh, we call them snap downs. They're up tall and they're reacting to our call. So that's your in-place neural activation. They're snapping down and a lot of times we'll give a go call. If you guys heard, I make them do a math equation. If it's an even number, they go, odd number, they stay, or vice versa. Because they're trying to think and react in a quick and prime manner. Does that all make sense? Or Does it make sense? Isaiah was doing a Colton the other day where he started online and he says five, four, three. You know, and he's got to sprint and get to that line. Exactly. So it's a quick burst, but he's also having to think and work while you go. Now think about that in sport related. Almost every sport, you have to think while you play, right? So it adds a good relation here, but also they have to think while they learn their movement base. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does everything warm up wise? Do you guys all feel like you have a pretty good uh, control and concept of everything right here? Cool. Trudging question. So for the neural activation, what would be a good example you use for like an older population? Older population, so they were thinking regress, so making them smooth. A lot of snap downs because they're still easy. They're still reacting to you, but they're having to drop from top to bottom very quick. Um, but same thing, you can play a game with that. I play tic tac toe with the older population a lot as well. Um, you can even see some type of box jumps, different quick bursts, even sprints going throughout anything to where they're going to have to react and work kind of together as one. Okay. Cool. Think of this warm-up. This is the perfect warm-up for a performance-based session. When you get to some general uh, fitness, so a gen pop adult, you can kind of get a little bit mixed up in between these two. But if we're thinking for a uh, performance-based athlete, this is what kind of model we want to follow. Cool. That makes sense? All right, we're going to all hop out to the turf. I'm actually going to put you guys through a guided example of our performance-based warm-up. That way you guys can feel it, and then we'll kind of go throughout for the rest of the day, okay? Cool. Let's hop on out. Cool. And then Ryan, if you want, let's go ahead and switch into those D1 shirts. There's bathrooms all along this left wall. Uh, what did you do for the neural activation for... Um, the pro guys today? Or no, the... Um, I forget his name. The Grant? Yeah. Grant. Uh, we did snap down sprints. So he was up tall. Drop, sprint. So he was oh, reacting to my go call. So okay, not only did you have to wait and react, but he had to drop and sprint. Okay. So we kind of combined two and one right there. Are we coming back in here? Oh, no. You guys can grab your stuff. 